Hi, this is Court, and this is part two in a little mini tutorial series I'm doing to kind of kick off my channel this 4th of July. Um, so if you watch video one, you'll know that we bought, we built this resampled saw, and uh, we don't really need this analog track anymore. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to use a little bit of formant EQing to sort of build this into a vowel base. So to do this, I'm going to need my handy dandy little uh, sheet. This little guy, it's gonna inform me how to build my curves. <clears throat> so you're asking yourself, what is a formant? Well, a formant is basically an EQ shape that you can kind of look at and say, vowel sounds have this sort of EQ shape. It turns out that vowels kind of have an absolute EQ no matter what pitch they're centered on. So if you want something that's kind of like E, there's an absolute EQ for that. It doesn't matter what pitch you have it at. It's E, 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 E. For that steady state sort of vowel uh, timbre, you can do that just through additive EQing at absolute pitches. So let's just kind of jump into it and you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to bring in a patch of EQ8. I'm going to set these all to band passes and I'm going to make a little group of it. All right, here we go. So we are going to make a E to A ah kind of sound. E, ah, yaw, yaw, yaw. That's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna change the name of my patch to He to Hod. And if you guys are wondering what this link is, this is from, uh, oh, I can't even remember the name of the website, but I'll include it in the link so you can kind of look at it. It has some interesting things to say about the way in which we perceive timbre. Um, but regardless, this is our short chart for how these absolute formant curves are built. And I'm gonna kind of show you how to use them. So we want the E sound from the heed. So we're gonna to go to frequency one. I'm gonna do some mapping. We need this guy. So frequency one is going to go from map, a bottom value of 270, that's for heed. And it's gonna go up to hod at 570. And this is F1, which is our loudest frequency. So let's set the gain at something that seems appropriate. So maybe eight and let's make it a little bit sharp. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to map our second frequency. It looks like frequency two for heat is 2290. So frequency map 2290. And it goes to beep, hod 840. Cool. So then let's make some kind of appropriate gain staging for this. So maybe five decibels, I don't know, seems about right. And there we go. Little pinchy harmonic there. And our third frequency is at 3010 for F3. So let's see, frequency, I'm gonna map that. 3010, and that is going to 2410. And let's set a gain of, I don't know. So this was three, or this was five. Uh, let's just choose like three decibels. Kind of make this a little pinchy guy also. All right, so now you can sort of hear that it's kind of making an e-i-yo-yo-yo sound. So I am going to map scaling to this dude right here so we can kind of make it sharper based on what we want. Let's just hear what it sounds like at the sharpest first. Oops. So we made that. All right, cool. So now you're probably saying to yourself, well, that's kind of E-I-E-I-E-I-E, but I kind of want it more e i e i e i e i e i So we can use some subtractive EQing to kind of bring this out. Basically, wherever you have a harmonic, like these little pinched harmonics, there are things right nearby them that are interfering. They're kind of, um, they're extra frequencies that are sort of smearing that pitch. So I'm just gonna add in some really basic subtractive EQing to try and bring out uh, the e -y -y ness of this um, around the pitches where there is nothing going on. Mm -hmm. So that should do a little bit. Cool. So then our final step is we want to kind of go over the top. I'm going to use uh, filter Saturn for this, but we want to go over the top and kind of change the EQ shape of the whole thing to sort of bring out what we want. So we want some more bases. We want kind of like a punchy top end. We're gonna use that tape and let's see how this sounds. Uh, 
and maybe not quite so much of this, maybe a little bit of the center part for the harmonics. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's just a way, but really what I use this sort of EQing, this like EQ modulation for, is if I have kind of a cool sound going on already, and I kind of hear that there's some of this vowel nature going on, a little bit of E-aw, and you can kind of build this sort of EQ over the top to kind of amplify that effect. So I hope this was helpful. I think this is a really neat little trick. I'll make sure to include this in the links and just keep watching.